Hey, it's Clay, and today I wanted to do a software review shootout between three of the top uh, computer screen program recording programs available. Uh, we've got MSI Afterburner, we've got Fraps, and DX3. Now, Fraps is probably the one that's been on the block the longest. Uh, DX3 has recently come up and has a lot of new cool features, um, and after MSI Afterburner is also fairly new. Uh, and what sets it apart is that it is actually free, uh, whereas Fraps and DX3 you have to pay for. So uh, I want to uh, show some Battlefield 3 clips. Uh, just uh, I'm using high graphics settings, um, and I just try to run through the same route and do the same sort of animations just to kind of show off the ways in which these programs handle the different settings um, and kind of talk about some of the pros and cons uh, while the clips are running. So I'll be uh, back. We're going to start with Fraps, then we'll move to DirectX 3, and then we'll finish with MSI Afterburner. Starting with Fraps, it's a very uh, all solid program all around. Uh, definitely will get the job done. It's been a workhorse for many years, uh, and in some ways has been kind of the standard industry standard for screen capture software. Um, a couple things about Fraps is uh, it will also do screenshots, and it will also monitor your desktop, which is a unique feature that uh, none of the other programs will allow you to do. Uh, so uh, if you're looking to do more than just record gameplay software, this is probably going to be your best choice uh, because it will also allow you to not only take screenshots but to just capture your physical desktop. Um, the uh, f the f clip on this one was about 50 seconds long, and it would came out to about 1.7 gigabytes. Uh, and uh, but one thing I will note about Fraps is that uh, in game. You actually will notice a bit of a performance drop. Um, it's hard to actually really quantify it and compare apples to apples. Um, but I would definitely say that uh, you do notice a performance drop with Fraps. Uh, and also just a kind of a quirky thing about it is uh, your uh, files will actually max out at 4 gigabytes and then it will start a new file. Uh, so if you're recording long segments of gameplay, it could be a bit of a pain to have to link all those together and to figure out the, uh, make sure that they're all in the right order. Uh, which is not something you have to deal with with the other programs. In terms of features and options, Fraps is the most limited choice. You're able to choose your frames per second and full size or half size, but that's about it. Um, and, and compared to the other programs, it's just very limited um, in what you can do as far as uh, options and features for the actual video that you're capturing. Moving on now to DX3. DX3 is uh, hands down the most high functioning program in terms of options, features, customization. Uh, it's absolutely crazy what you can all do in terms of, you I mean you can choose from doing different codecs, different uh, capture sizes, different compression rates. Um, it will also do screenshots uh, and it's definitely the most uh, customizable choice between the three options. Uh, that said, it also uh, has the most inefficient compression. Uh, this f clip was about 50 seconds long and it came out to about 3.5 gigabytes which was um, about double of the Fraps uh, output and so overall it, it really uh, captures very raw video but uh, it, the file sizes are gigantic um, and the overall uh, feature size definitely uh, will help contribute to that. Now I could have done customized it in certain ways to cut down on that file size um, but I wanted to try to get as close of a comparison as I could uh, as far as video and just to sh kind of show the differences. Um, now it will also, this Dextry will also do screenshots, uh, which is a good bonus, but it will not monitor your desktop. Now as far as in-game performance, I did also notice a frame rate hit. Uh, it was maybe slightly better than Fraps, uh, but overall it was definitely similar. Um, and there was definitely some performance issues that I had to work out. And there, I've noticed that some games tend to be a little bit wonky with directory. Uh, they just get a little bit finicky compared to others. Um, so, and I and I I would attribute maybe that because it's definitely taking in the most amount of video. It's capturing, it's uh, doing the most work. There's the most amount of customization. Uh, so it definitely puts a bit more of a greater strain on your computer. Uh, but all that said, if you're looking for really, really uh, high quality, high customization, uh, this is an excellent choice, um, and it really works well. The last of our shootout is going to be the MSI Afterburner screen capture functionality. Now this program is uh, can do a lot more than just screen capture. It can monitor your computer. You can use it for overclocking. It has a ton of functionality. Uh, but I'm not going to. I'm only going to cover the uh, screen capture ability. Um, and this actually uh, is really cool. It has a lot of customization. Um, not quite as much as DX3, but still very good. Now the biggest benefit of this program in my mind was that gameplay had minimal frame hit. Um, 
So while this was running, my frames were almost just as good as if it were not running at all, uh, which was a huge benefit, and that's probably maybe the top priority in my mind, uh, which makes it maybe this one might be my favorite. Now I did have a bit of an issue. This first clip is actually the uncompressed video file, which came in at about 5 gigs, which isn't a surprise because there's no compression going on. But the two stock compression formats available in this in uh, MSI Afterburner are not compatible with Sony Vegas. Uh, and I spent about two hours trying to figure it out, try to figure out a way to get it to work, but I could not. Uh, so this second clip is actually, I used Handbrake to uh, shrink it down to about an 86 meg file size, which is a lot more manageable. Uh, but that is a whole other step that you have to do to make your video uh, compressed. So uh, it was a bit of a pain to get it to work with Sony Vegas, but that's just using this specific program. Uh, but hopefully they can get that figured out in future updates of the MSI Afterburner, allowing for other codecs that are compatible with Sony Vegas. Uh, so if you use that program, that's maybe something to consider. Uh, it would be a bit more of a headache. Uh, but overall, I really like MSI Afterburner. It has a ton of functionality um, other than just screen capture. And uh, also, the biggest thing for me is that the frame hit is very minimal. Uh, you, have, you can play your game. You, it's going to be smooth. And anybody who plays FPS is in even like a semi-competitive state will know that you know frame hits can r be th sometimes the difference between life and death. Uh, so uh, being very efficient in that manner is a really important um, but at the same time, I was having some problems uh, getting it to work with Sony Vegas. Uh, and lastly, the biggest thing I need to stress about this is that it's free. You don't have to pay for it. You can just Google it, download it, and run it, It's uh, which is a huge bonus in my mind uh, that you don't have to worry about paying for it. So, But anyways, that's the end of the shootout. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Um, let me know if uh, you found this helpful or what screen capture program you guys are using, and I'll see you soon.